The goal of Project Voodoo Banshee is to create a lightweight and powerful trail machine. With a tight wheelbase and classic peaky two-stroke power, this thing should be super fun for the trails. Banshees are not known for their handling abilities, so this could be a challenge. So far, we've gone over the color scheme and build plan, products that we've ordered for the build, we built custom heel guards and nerf bars for it, tore down the engine and inspected the internals, and started going over a number of the parts that came in and weighed them against stock, including a set of wheels and tires that end up being much heavier than we anticipated. In this video, we'll be cleaning the cases, port matching them to the cylinders, doing a cleanup port on the cylinders themselves, opening up new parts that came in, and yes, we will be putting them on the scale of doom and weighing them against takeoffs. We've got a new set of wheels and tires, and I think we're gonna have some major savings. Let's get into it. Man, the level of excitement right now is just through the roof. There's boxes coming in like every single day. Like, check this out. This literally just walked through the door, well, through the garage door. When I get big boxes, they take them right to the garage door. Pretty sure my UPS guy hates me, but that's all right, man. I love you, dude. I uh, I should really give that guy something because he's like basically a sponsor of the channel. He's always carrying these giant packages up here. But anyways, I know what's in these boxes. I'm really excited for it. We're going to wait till the end of the video. We're going to open this stuff up, probably test some weight saving stuff. Oh, check this out. Made in China to the USA. Now, is that honesty or is that honesty? So usually <laughs> I see some of these companies that says made in the USA, but it's like, they're stocked in the USA, but made China. But anyways, that's uh, getting pretty exciting. We got all this stuff in here. Had a new lockup clutch cover that came from BP Racing ATV, and it is lighter than the one that I'm taking off. I already weighed it. Got some aluminum lug nuts. Or lug nuts. These are from GPS. Uh, we're gonna be doing some stuff with the wheels too. Unfortunately, I don't have those parts just yet. Maybe they'll come while I'm filming this video. I don't know, but I've got an update on the wheels because they were just too heavy for this, for this particular build anyways. These are awesome rims, awesome tires, really beefy, super heavy duty. But for what we're doing, I think it's just gonna be a little bit too heavy. What I wanna start with is cleaning up all these engine parts because I'd like to get this engine built sooner than later. They're, they're pretty cruddy. So uh, the finish looks pretty good where it's not dirty. I don't even think I'm gonna have to send these out for vapor blasting. So I think we can save these, clean those things up, get our crank, all this stuff cleaned up, this old clutch cover, even though we're not gonna be using that clutch cover, it's just good to clean this stuff up. Now what I'm gonna be using is this Bike Master parts washer. I love this thing. Every time I have a video with it, people ask me where I got it. So I'll have the link for this in the description below, but it's a really nice parts washer. One of the things I like about it the most is that it's plastic. So a lot of like, um, if you go to Harbor Freight, they have, they have like a decent parts washer, but they're metal and over time, usually the coating on them peels away, they can corrode and everything like that. I feel like the plastic one's just gonna last forever. And it's really small. When I'm done with it, I put it on this shelf over here, kind of tucks away. And it's like, you'd never even know it's there. So for a regular do-it-yourselfer, like at, at the home garage, really nice parts washer. It's got a bristled uh, cleaning brush in there. It's just a nice piece, man. So, and it's, it's decently large. You know, you can do case halves and stuff in here. And I even do the axle. I'll show you how I do the axle, like the, the whole regular rear axle. I'll, I'll lay that across there. And then the center portion that's dirty is right in the middle. Clean it up. It just makes life a lot easier. Finding that the best way to clean cases is a three-step process. First, I put it in the parts washer with the, my, my mix in there is half diesel, half mineral spirits. And then I put it in the utility sink, use awesome degreaser, and then I use aluminum brightener. I have those two chemicals right here. And we have Rockstar, if you, you wash it in that as well, if, if you want. And then um, this is awesome degreaser. You, can get, you guys can get this at Dollar Tree. It's a dollar for a whole bottle of this stuff. It's like the cheapest degreaser I can find. And honestly, it is awesome. I think it's better than like uh, Purple Power and stuff like that and Simple Green and it's cheaper. And then Aluminum Brightener, I get this at Napa if it isn't obvious. Look how these things came out, man. I don't know if this is a result of the fact that they were vapor blasted in the first place or if, you know, those chemicals really did clean it that well. I don't know, but 
it literally looks like they just got vapor blasted again. You guys can see the top here. These are actually fingerprints from moving these things around. So if you guys watched the first series, I did initially get these vapor blasted the first time I built this thing. So I don't know if maybe vapor blasting is like a very resistant finish. I mean, there's nothing coating the case. It's just ultra smooth. I don't know if maybe it makes the aluminum less porous or something. I really have no idea. I mean, this quad sat outside and multiple times, as you guys saw when I tore this thing down, a lot of times I didn't even clean this thing up. I just left it sit outside. And sure enough, you know, this thing sat out in the cold. Dirt was baked on the cylinders and stuff. The cylinders cleaned up really nice too. You can see this one's like a little discolored, but these actually weren't vapor blasted. Those, uh, these, this is how they came from driveline performance, but even they cleaned up really nice. So I think it's a combination of the chemicals that I'm using to clean them. And I don't know, vapor blasting is the way to go. If you guys do want to do that, I, I use a different company now. Uh, you can contact Shell Vest. I'll put his uh, Instagram tag below. He does excellent work. I was going to send these out to him, but again, there's just no reason. So what I'm going to be doing is taking these studs out because I want to, I'm not going to surface these portions of the case, but I want to surface in between the cases. We'll probably surface the two, uh, where the two side covers go. It's just good to do that. Make sure we have um, all good contact and mating uh, surfaces so we don't have any leaks. And BP Racing sent us these stud kits. These are really nice because you can get them with an Allen head. You don't have to use like the double nut uh, technique to remove them or put them in. I'll show you that technique in a second to get the OEM ones out. But these are going to be really nice. It'll be a nice little upgrade. Got our new cylinders right here. These are the Alpha Cub cylinders, also sent by BP Racing. These things are nasty, man. I want to weigh these things against the driveline cylinders since we're doing you know all this weight stuff. And here's the old clutch cover right here. If you guys saw, I pulled this thing off. This is also another BP Racing part. They sent me this is a new. It's a quick change cover. It's not. It's technically not a lockup cover. You could use a slingshot style and it would fit in there, but this one doesn't, it's not quite as big as the one that I'm pulling off. So the traditional lockup wouldn't fit in there, but the quick change is really what makes these things so special because if you gotta take the whole cover off to change your clutch, it sucks. You don't even have to change your oil or dump the oil to change your clutch when you have a cover like this. You can put the ATV up on its side a little bit and pull the cover off and change the clutch out. It's just, it's really nice. I will have these linked in the description below and let's weigh it against the other one. All right, so we're gonna do it in pounds. We're at zero. This is the driveline performance, which is a great cover, by the way. 3.778. All right, 3.778. And now for the BP Racing cover, 3.526. So what is that, like um, a quarter of a pound? It's a quarter of a pound lighter. So this is an OEM cover that's converted to a quick change. So they take an OEM cover, they cut the front of it off, and then they put a ring on the outside here, they weld it, and then there's a piece of Lexan glass that you bolt to the front, and that way you can remove that and put that back on. It just makes things a lot easier. Plus, it looks really trick. You can see your clutch working in there and stuff. Pretty sweet. Now, I'm sure there's a good deal of you that are thinking it's really ridiculous to save a quarter of a pound, and just all these little trivial losses and weight that we're doing, is it really gonna make a difference? Well, probably not. Am I still gonna do it? Definitely. But I wanted to show you something to kind of prove a point. So I have, this is a bolt kit for the Banshee. This is almost all of the bolts. It doesn't include foot peg bolts, linkage bolts, and the swing arm bolt. So let's see what these weigh, right? One little bolt would change nothing, you know? 9.768, and we'll put the swing arm bolt on there too because that's the biggest bolt on there. So 10, basically 10 and a half pounds, right? That's, that's a decent amount of weight. So one little bolt weighs like a couple grams and you think and you switch it to titanium or aluminum, is it really gonna make a difference? But if you were to change all of these bolts to titanium, titanium is about 45% lighter. So for sake of argument, we're just gonna say 50% because that's easier. So 10 and a half pounds, that would come down to five and a quarter pounds. That's actually a pretty significant difference, five and a quarter pounds. But I know a lot of people are still gonna be like five pounds, is it really worth it again? Probably not. But nevertheless, I'm enjoying doing this. And I think sometimes people forget, this is a fun project. We're just doing this in the garage as a recreational project. Nobody's life is on the line here. I just wanna see how much weight we can lose on this thing. And I'm having a great time. Uh, regardless, I wanna get those studs changed. And in the meantime, I took a seven hour break and I finished packing up all the rest of the 2021 blackout t-shirts. Took a ton of time, but it's super worth it. You guys are awesome. We sold a ton of those things. So they're all done. They're going to be in the mail as of tomorrow, as long as we don't get a foot of snow tonight, which we actually might. And when I was waiting in that seven hours, some stuff came in the mail we've got a set of super squished tires and a set of possibly lighter wheels 
I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. But we will be weighing those things against those other Kendas because I'm thinking we got to make a switch up because those Kenda Havocs and the GPS wheels, phew, cool stuff, really hardcore, heavy duty. But for this build, I don't know. Okay, so on the top portion of our case half, we've got eight studs on the top. There are cylinder base studs. And then on the bottom, we've got another eight studs. This one right here, uh, actually, it was stuck to the bolt and the stud came out when we uh, took these cases apart. At any rate, uh, we've got these upgraded studs I want to put in there. So last night before I went to bed, put a little bit of PB blaster on these. Hopefully these will break free. We're going to use the double nut method, which is really easy. Basically take two nuts, crush them together, tighten them against each other as much as you can. And then they can usually break these studs free. If you have an impact gun, it makes it way easier, but you don't have to have one of those. And before I do that, I want to take this little coolant tube out. Uh, all Banshees have these. It's just a little thing that runs that little coolant line that goes up in the back between the two cylinders. There's a tiny little clip right here. We're going to pop that off, and then it should slide right through. We'll have to take off this little O-ring also. Get our O-ring. This needs to be replaced. Ow, shit. All right, so this is as simple as taking two nuts. And then... We're just going to tighten them up against each other, tighten it up, and then there we go, no problem. And we'll just take our tool here and take these off. We're going to do the same thing for all of them. How I messed up on the first one is that usually I like to run the uh, box end of the wrench on first, just because that will grip that lower nut a lot better than the open end. And you have a lot less chance of you know, rounding out the edges of the nut. All right, now you guys know about my two nuts trick. So I'm just gonna go around, take out the rest of these studs. So when my nuts aren't working, I like to give it a little bit of extra grip and just really go crazy with it. We're not reusing these studs anyways, so. Oh my God, oh, this, is, this is really quite bad. Let's give it a little heat. Oh man, the cases are even hot up here. Oh, there we go, we got it. There we go. Once it's moving, it's done. There we go. That's right, bitch. Now my nuts will do it. That's probably super hot. For a second, I thought my nuts were never gonna work again. All right, well, my nuts worked on these lower studs. I think what happens is that since this is the top of the case, um, you know, moisture and stuff sits in there and it rusts those things out. But the bottom ones were much easier. It probably took me about 30 minutes to get all of those out. So now that we've done that task, we have the arduous task of removing dowels. So your best bet here is to get your hands on a set of drill bits. This is a good inclusive set right here. Really what you're going to be using is, it doesn't really matter about the bits themselves, it's the width. We want to fill in these empty voids because if we grab these with a pair of vice grips or something, since they're hollow, they'll, they'll collapse and you won't be able to get them out or it'll just make it even more difficult. So you got to support that so that we can grip onto that. All right, right there, that's pretty good. So now we'll get our vice grips on here and see if we can twist this thing out. Looks like it's moving. Yep. Maybe these won't be as bad as I thought. You gotta be careful too. You wanna make sure you're not marring up the cases with the vice grips. So just don't get carried away. Whew. Finally. Look at that bastard. You really gotta be careful when you're doing this because when you get carried away, this can get really annoying and you're pulling up on this thing and you can literally, when this pops loose, this drill bit will go right in your eye. It's actually how I've got these peeper guards on. That's the last thing that we need happening right now. You wouldn't want to get in your jugular either. I feel like that would be bad. Wow, what a pain in the ass that was. But they did all come out. I don't know if you guys can see, it's pretty cruddy in there. There's one thing I want to do before we start doing our port matching. I want to clean those out. I'm just going to run a tap 
through all of those, make sure that our threads are good because there was a lot of junk and stuff. You can see our old studs here. These things are grody, man. I can't wait to get rid of these things. A couple of them, you know, I had to get the vice grip on there and destroyed them. But actually, if you really needed to, you could reuse these if you clean the threads up and stuff. But they were all slightly tweaked a little bit and we're running a mono block. So if any of those are even bent just slightly, it really makes it a pain in the butt to get that thing on and especially off. So really, we should never run these things again. But I mean, if you look at some of these, I mean, you can see there was all kinds of grit and stuff in the threads and it's probably the same way down in those cases. So we wanna clean that up. Now I'm using regular taps here with some cutting wax, but they do make special taps made just for retracing threads. If you're careful, these are fine. Just gotta be careful. You don't wanna bottom them out and blow the bottom of the case out. Those other tools though, that's something I have on my list. You guys can see in this bit, all that junk, that's all stuff, a lot of dirt and grit and stuff that it's pulling out of the cases. You wanna make sure you clean your tap every time you run through. Otherwise it gets gummed up and it can get jammed up and snap off. You really don't want that happening. Basically you just take your toothbrush, an old toothbrush or one that you currently use, like the one that I'm using, and we'll just brush that out. You can see it cleans it right up. These things get filled up with case sealant and stuff over the years. All kinds of bad stuff that just makes it so that putting those studs in and out just becomes a nightmare. Nobody cleans this stuff out. The last thing I wanna do is take this uh, soft wire brush and then a soft bristle brush that we're gonna go through after with this and just go in and clean up where our dowels go because they're filled with grit and grime and stuff. And then we're gonna flush these things out. Now I'll take some brake clean and flush out these holes. Now I'm gonna soak these down and rinse them out in the utility sink one last time. And then we'll blow these things out real good. All right, now these case halves are just about ready to go. The only thing left to do is get off the old gasket material. This was that anaerobic gasket material that I used on these. Great stuff, by the way. We're not gonna use that this next time around, but if anybody's curious if anaerobic gasket maker is good, it works great for two strokes and four strokes. But anyways, I wanna get rid of that stuff, so I got a brand new razor in here. You can see there were some low spots on these cases. All the spots where there's extra gasket maker, those are all low spots, most likely. Yeah, we'll really be able to tell when we surface this thing. When we flip this over and put it on the sanding table, when you do it just a little bit and pull it over, you can see where all the low spots are. And that's probably why, if you guys remember when I built this thing, one of these studs was leaking. So there was probably, you know, a low spot where one of the studs go and uh, air was coming out of there. Go ahead and take this stuff off. With a new razor, stuff comes right off. It's actually pretty satisfying to do. Stuff cleans right up. When you're doing this, you always wanna to try to cut away from yourself because when you come close to yourself, you can slip and cut yourself. I may or may not have done that before. The next thing I'm doing here is giving just a quick surface on these cases. You have to be really careful with Banshee cases because they're horizontally cut. So if you go too far, you're gonna take them out of spec. So I really only gave it a couple passes just to knock off any sharp edges and kind of clean things up. If you do this, you need to make sure that you've got a perfectly flat surface. You can't just do it on the countertop or anything like that. I actually discovered after making this video that the piece of granite that I surface on is slightly out of spec and I ordered a new surfacing stone. Luckily, my cases are still okay, but it's something that you definitely wanna check and make certain of, but a flat surface is imperative or it's possible you could ruin your cases. See guys, just five minutes of work and you can make your cases look like brand new again too. These did come up really nice. All nice and surfaced, both sides. We should have no issues with leaks this time. There's one low spot right here, if you guys can see that. It's at the edge though. It's not worth it for me to take material off the whole thing just to get that one little area. Everything else looks really good. You can see how clean it is and where our dowels go. Back here, all that stuff was just filled with junk before. So when you do this stuff, it's just gonna make it easier down the road for servicing. And we probably won't even have to service it as much or as soon as we would if we didn't do this stuff. 
because this thing is going to be nice and tight. Before I went any further, I assembled my cases with the transmission and crankshaft in there. I wanted to make sure that the rotating assemblies move nice and freely since we did remove some material from the cases. If too much material is removed from the case halves, it's possible to have the transmission or the crankshaft bind up. Both the transmission and the crankshaft should spin freely with all the case bolts torqued down. So we'll go ahead, looks like our crank, nice and smooth, and we'll spin our transmission. No binding whatsoever, I think we're good to go. All right, now for the fun part, let's do our port matching. So what port matching is, is we want to match our case half to our cylinders. So the transfer ports are on the side right here. Let me pull this off for a second. And when the piston is on the downstroke, as the, as the piston comes down, it compresses gases in the crankcase and pushes them out and up through these transfer ports. And then the fuel and air mixture comes out of the transfers in the cylinder on top of the piston and that's your combustible gases. So if we have optimal flow, we're gonna have better performance. So what I'm gonna do is, well first I can show you with the gasket. So here's our base gasket. This is um, a, special, a special gasket for Cub style cylinders. So if you're using a stock cylinder, you may have two individual gaskets. Sometimes it's still a single gasket. But anyways, uh, I'll, put the, I'll put it on the cylinder first and I'll show you because these match up pretty good with the transfers on the cylinder. I'm gonna to try to keep this in the most layman terms possible because I know I, you can get lost pretty easy. So you can see this gasket lines up with these transfer ports, this whole area, pretty nicely, almost exact. It's, it's damn near perfect. However, there is one spot back here. If you guys see under here, there's a spot that the gasket covers. We're gonna fix that, but for ease of argument right now, let's just say that's the exact size, right? Now let's pop this over on our cylinder and look at that, man. Look at all that material that we can remove. That's like a ba that's basically like a flat wall that gases are just gonna smack into and it's gonna disrupt flow. That's the big thing. So we wanna make these the same size as the ones in our cylinder. And like I said, that's gonna optimize flow. We'll get better performance. I'm gonna throw a couple studs in here real quick and pop the cylinder on. And I think I'll be able to give you a little bit uh, better of a visual of exactly why we're doing this. I just want to get these in place. Flip this over. All right, I moved these cases around and I found that on the side like this gives the best visual. It's going to be difficult though. I'm going to try to explain here. So this is the left side cylinder facing upward. This is our sleeve right here. This is the case, this portion right here. And then if we go inside, this is our cylinder. So if you come down here, you see the pick catches on this ledge. There's a good lip right there. And that's what we want to get rid of. We want this to be nice, smooth flow. It seems really small and it is. I mean, it would still run great even leaving this lip, but we're going for the best performance that we can possibly get. So we're just going to clear that out. I'd say there's maybe, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch that we can remove there but it's all the way across there. We can get a decent amount of material out of there. And I'll give you guys a look at the other side. Same thing. I think the inside one, we can actually take a little bit more material. You can see that drop off as soon as, as, soon as you go over that edge. Pretty good amount we can take off there. So that is the goal to smooth that out. All right, let's start on the cylinder side and make our gasket match up the cylinder perfectly because the cylinder has larger transfers than the case. So this is what we'll be using for as a template. Now to match this gasket up with the cases, there's just that one portion on each side that we have to open up. And this gasket is made of, I'm not actually sure, it's like a foam. It's a, um, it's a chromatic gasket. It's like foam lined. It's some kind of like foam crush material. And it looks like there's aluminum or some kind of some kind of metal in there. So, you know, I don't think that a blade would cut that very well. So I'm gonna use a burr and just use very, very light pressure and just kind of work away at this until just the right amount of material is, just the right amount of material is taken out. That should work just fine. And it's okay if we bump up against the transfer on this cylinder because we're gonna be cleaning all of that up anyways. And just to keep this gasket from moving around while we're cutting it, Gonna use these little DeWalt clamps. That ought to hold it in place. Well, 
Well, that did a really nice job. If you get down real low, you can see the inside of the case and that made it really easy to get these done. So those sides are matched up perfectly. And now what I'm gonna do is just go around the edges and take anything like these just tiny little lips. I'm just gonna go around and make these match up with the gasket perfectly on all four sides. And then we'll pop it on the case. And we'll do the case. All right, now these are matched up perfectly with the gaskets. Check that out, man. That is perfect. So now we got a really nice template that we can throw on the cases and we'll be able to match them perfect. It's funny, I'm looking at these cylinders and you can see the little imperfections here and here. They're exactly the same. You can tell that these is, it was like a mold, the same mold to make both of these. It's like they made two duplicate molds and then put them next to each other to make this mono block. It's actually really cool how these are made. If you guys wanna see a video, I actually went to CPI. I went in their factory and they, we kind of walked at a walkthrough. They showed me exactly how they make these cylinders. It's really cool if you wanna see how they cast and make these things. So I'll have that video linked below. Really cool video. All right, now we'll throw our gasket back on the case half. Make sure those dowel pins are locked in place so we have this lined up. Wow, look at that. These cylinders actually go beyond where we can port. You see where there's a, an empty cavity right here? That goes back into this portion. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with that. I can't weld aluminum here, so I would have to take the, this case half someplace and just have them pile up the aluminum in this cavity in the back, which that really shouldn't be an issue at all. And then we just have to surface this. That's more than likely what I'm gonna do. So I can't do that right now. So I think what I'll do is mark this area off up to here and if I decide against that, I can, you know, still not have to do it. But the way that this is, I mean, gases could get in there. So I think, opti I, think I am going to fill that up and just take care of that portion. But for purposes of this video, we can do the inside portions and we can do everything up into that area. So I'm going to take a, just a regular black Sharpie and hold the gasket down and we'll just trace where we need to cut. All right, so we have quite a bit of material to take off here. And we're not just going to straight up, you know, go over and make it match up. We want to make it match up, but we also want to smooth this whole portion and make it nice and ramped because the smoothest pathway that we have, the better flow we're going to have. And like I was saying before, with engines, flow equals performance. All right, now I've got a considerable amount of material to remove here, so I'm going to use my regular porting tool. This is usually what I use to port four-stroke heads, uh, but this will help move this along a lot faster. This is a really nice tool and it's got a foot control and it's speed controlled. So it's really, really, it's as controllable as you can get with porting stuff, at least as far as I've found. So it's also a good idea to wear a face mask or um, you know, a respirator because you get microscopic particles of aluminum and you breathe it in, especially if you're doing like a head or something and you're gonna be doing this for a while. You'll see afterwards, it's almost like when you spray paint, you don't have a mask on, you go to blow your nose and all this stuff comes out. Aluminum's really bad to get in your lungs. So definitely wear a mask. All right, now that I've knocked the majority of the material out, I'm gonna go in with this sanding cone and just smooth it out a bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. All right, let's have a look-see at what we have here. So I did the one side and left the other side so that we can see the difference. Wow, would you look at that? You can see this one matches up nice and perfect. And this one, man, when you see the difference there, that is huge, man. That is like, it's damn near a quarter of an inch, man. That is really gonna open up a lot of flow there. I would say anywhere between, I don't know, like eight to 200 horsepower, give or take two to 14. It's, it's gonna be a big power gain. So I left this area kind of untouched because like I said, I wanna fill that with weld. And then that one will be a big sweep because like I said, that port kind of shoots in this way. So I'm just gonna leave that one the way it is there. It's okay to have 
this texture in here, this to me, that's exactly the way I want it. You gotta remember, these are in, these are incoming fuels. Just like on an intake port, you don't want a super smooth surface, especially on a two stroke. That helps with atomization of the fuel. So leaving it with that uh, little bit of rough, it's not really rough, but uh, I, I wouldn't wanna polish that. Just like that, it's gonna be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then uh, excluding the portion that has to be welded, these will be done. I want to stop to take a moment to thank all the companies that are helping to make Project Voodoo Banshee possible. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV MC, BP Racing ATV, Kenda Tire, DRW Performance, Hermosi Throttles, Rocket Run Suspension, Mod Quad, Dave Moore Racing, Bonehead Performance Coatings, AP3 Racing, Shellvest Innovations, and Wicked Metal Designs. These are all companies that I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. All products and tools in this video will be linked in the description below. If you're interested in these products and you're looking for a way to support the channel, using these links does help me out and there's no added cost to you. If you're enjoying the video so far, please remember to hit that like button and leave a comment below and consider subscribing. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All channel members get guaranteed responses to their YouTube comments. I will also be changing the channel name to Basket Case Garage. This is a transition that will take place slowly over the next few months. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, now that our cases are port matched, I want to go around and do a cleanup port on these cylinders. Now, I'm not going to do like a tutorial on this, but basically I want to take stuff like if you look in these transfers, there's a mark in there from casting. I'll make sure that I, I'll knock that down. We just want, again, nice and smooth flow. All these rough areas and stuff, when you put your finger in there, you can feel the roughness. I just wanna smooth all that stuff out. So we'll get on all the transfers. And then in the exhaust ports, same thing. You can see casting marks. I'm just gonna um, get rid of those. I'll probably, I'm not gonna polish the exhaust, but I'll smooth it out so that it's a lot smoother than it is now. And on the intake, same thing, man. There's a lot of roughness in there. You can see, look at all that roughness all in there. So we'll clean all that stuff out, all these little imperfections and stuff. And I can even get way up in here with these in these transfers with this little porting tool right here. This actually fits right up in there. I can clean up all of the casting and stuff in there. Sometimes I have to stop and think about what this is gonna look like to you guys. This whole segment is probably gonna be like 30 seconds long. But I've actually been out here porting for, I don't know, like three hours. This portion, the port matching on the cases, that was pretty easy. That probably, realistically, you can do that in like uh, maybe hour, hour and a half. That's, that's not that difficult. But dude, doing the little tiny ports and stuff on these cylinders is a pain in the ass. And I gotta take a break. So this cylinder is basically done. This one I didn't really touch too much just because like I said, man, I'm just tired of doing this. You can see in the transfers, I got rid of most of the seams and stuff in there. If you look at this side, it's dark, but you can see the seams and stuff. So I got rid of all that stuff on the transfers. I tried to do a little bit of uh, rounding out on these and I worked a little bit of magic here on the cylinder. Uh, but again, again, this isn't like a, a porting tutorial. If you come up here, here's the cylinder that's not done. All that roughness. You can see seams and stuff in there. And then if you come over here, got nice, even. It's still rough, which is what I want. I didn't do anything here because I'm pretty sure the reeds, uh, that I don't think that area affects anything. Clean up a little bit of some of the stuff that was up there. Did not go too crazy with this. Like I said, I just want to do like a clean up. And then on the exhaust side, I did both of these, but Nice and smooth, not polishing it. Just wanted to get those seams and stuff out. That one I went all the way up into the uh, the cylinder. And then as far as the transfers on the inside and stuff, I may come in there and do some work, but man, I gotta take a break from this. I was kind of surprised how much material came out. You know, it's supposed to be just like a clean up port and uh, got a good amount came out of there. I don't wanna take too much out cause I still want this to, you know, I wanna see how these cylinders like I, it won't be out of the box performance, but like basically, like I'm not adjusting the port heights or anything like that. Now I'm itching to open up some new parts, but there's one last thing I wanna do before I'm done with these cylinders, at least for the day, and that is put in these little plugs. They look like little like set screws basically, uh, but there's plugs here, these empty orifices here, and they kind of look into the water jacket. You guys probably won't be able to see in there, uh, but I've never touched CPI cylinders. Well, worked with them before and I wasn't really sure what these were, but apparently I believe that's to drain sand from the mold when they cast these things. So then you just gotta plug them up. I'm gonna do it now because you gotta put a little bit of RTV on these things to seal them and I'll do it now so that they can dry. I'll take a little bit of Yumbon 6B. This is the same stuff I will be using to seal our cases. I don't think we're gonna need too much on these. 
but I'm going to put a little bit just around the threads. I'm going to try not to make a huge mess, but I probably will. You want to make sure that you go in far enough that they're not sticking out. And you know what, I'm just going to cover these whole things because I do not want them leaking. And to the best of my knowledge, you never have to remove these things. It's just, uh, you know, something for the casting process. Well, I would love to just sit there and pour it until, you know, the end of eternity. But we do have some stuff to open up here, and I'm actually super stoked to open up these particular things. I've got a lot of weight-saving stuff. I'm sure you guys saw that LSR hub sitting there. Uh, I did get to modifying that. We'll go over that, too. Uh, basically, that's what I've spent the majority of my time this week doing is uh, researching because I don't want to make this ATV unreliable. I know a lot of people are, you know, a little, little bit of controversy, controversy over uh, weight reduction, but I have been doing quite a bit of research. We're not really doing extreme weight reduction. If you go to the drag strip and, you know, some just, you know, racers, a lot of cross country guys, they do like, like enduro people. They go crazy with weight savings. Like, you think this is crazy? You should see what they do. Uh, I just want it to be a little bit lighter because the Banshee is just a, he a heavy platform to begin with, especially with that front end bias and stuff. And I think we're going to get some good results here. So in the last video, we opened up the Kenda Havocs, which are, they're sick, dude. They're badass. Those are great. You know, the, the rims are super durable. They're a 0.190 rim. They've got that rolled lip. Everything is super thick and heavy duty. Those are great for somebody who's going to go, you know, do cross country and they want a, a rim that's going to last them forever. Well, I don't know about forever. If you're really aggressive, you know, any, any rim is prone to break. But they're an excellent rim for somebody who's not quite as concerned about weight. But for this particular project, they're just not that good. And the Havoc tire also, super aggressive platform. It's a six ply. I actually talked to my guy over at Kenda and he said those are designed for somebody who is looking to you know, get a hardcore tire that's just not gonna let them down. They're gonna be able to smash the rocks and go through pretty much anything and they're gonna last them a long time. You know, if you go with a lighter tire, you know, you're more prone to something popping. And also for somebody who's not looking to get tire support, like the, um, I think they're called tire blocks or like the old school tire balls, stuff like that. Somebody who just wants to throw the tire on there, it's a it's a decently affordable tire. And it's just, like I said, it's gonna last them forever. And it's probably got great uh, grip as well. I haven't had the pleasure of riding it yet, but I'm sure with the tread pattern that it has, it's it's an awesome tire. Now that being said, Kenda sent me some Kenda Dominators. You guys probably can't even recognize these things. These look like the tires that I got for the Raptor, if you guys remember that series. So I just pulled these tires apart and they are like so smushed. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I didn't even know that you could compress a tire that much. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, those were the most smushed tires I've ever seen. They had all four tires in a box. I mean, I guess they could probably do it with these Kendas too. I don't know. Uh, but this is just sometimes how tires come. So we got four ply dominators in the rear. And I can tell by picking these up that these, like both of these, I feel like weigh the same as, as one of the Havoc tires. So this, this should be better. Let's get these things apart, get them mounted on our new rims, which I'm about to pop open right now and see what the weight difference is against those Havocs. I have literally been saving doing this when I was sitting there porting and stuff. This is all I wanted to do was open up this stuff and weigh these rims. I've been, I, I'm really, really, I've, I've gotten really into the weight saving stuff. Oh, these are sweet, dude. These, these will match those rock out rims in the front perfectly. But yeah, I feel like I've gotten a little bit crazy with the weight savings, but I kind of enjoy this. And based on the comments and, and the DMs I've been getting, a lot of you guys enjoy it too. So uh, it doesn't seem like too many people are doing with this, doing this in general, and definitely not with the Yamaha Banshee, not making a trail machine. So it's going to be, it's just, I like modding machines and, oh God, I thought there were, uh, I thought there were, tubes in here. I got to show you what it looks like in here. I was, the way these tires are, are rolled in so deeply that it, it looks like there's tubes. So these are new clip-on tires. They uh, they actually clip together. You can see this is one half right here. This is insane. The beads are touching each other. They're so... <laughs> these are super squished, man. And uh, this is the new triangle tire. We're probably not going to be able to get an appreciation for these things until they're blown up on the actual rims because these just look so goofy the way they are. So let's get these things on the rims and pump them up. Let's, let's get an idea what they look like. I discovered last time that oil works just so much better than soap. It's it's not even funny. Yes. Yeah. Oh, now how am I going to get this bead to seat? 
it's like a suitcase. Got it. Yeah. Woo. I waited for that compressor to turn off for you guys just so that you could hear that pop. So two drastically different tires here. You can really see the difference, especially when you put them this way. Um, just the, they're both 20 by 11 by nines, but the carcass on the Havoc it just appears to be broader and more square. It's just, it's a more aggressive tire. It's very clear. Uh, tread depth looks to be a little bit deeper and the side lugs are way more aggressive. So what's cool about this is that these are two different tires suited to a totally different audience. So I said before, you're looking at more of a, you know, recreational uh, racer or somebody who just does hardcore terrain all the time and is looking for endless amounts of durability. They're not gonna have to worry about getting pops or anything like that. And then the Dominator is more of a recreational tire that's not quite as durable, but it's still plenty durable for your regular rider. And it's gonna get you around and over most obstacles. And what I like most about this is the tread pattern. I think we're gonna get really good sliding with this. This is similar to the tread pattern that we took off. I actually have that tire right here. You compare it side by side. However, you can see they are different. These appear to be closer together and these are a softer compound, whereas this is, these are rock hard. And I've run Kenda Dominators before. I had them on a Raptor 660 and I loved them. So I actually do have experience with these tires and it's part of the reason why I requested these from Kenda. We're gonna weigh all three of these just to give you guys a refresher on these two and let's see if we lost some weight. I don't really think it's necessary to run the bead locks like we have on, the, on either one of these. So we're gonna, we should save weight there. I don't think we'll be popping any uh, beads off the rim or anything. All right, let's weigh them. Now I'm gonna weigh the rims and the tires by themselves too, but I figure we might as well just get straight to the chase here and see what these things weigh, because this is what matters, the total weight. So the original tire that we took off, just over 19 pounds, 19.064. Now the Havoc, whew, man, this is a beefy tire. 24.56, so it's five and a half pounds heavier than the original setup. Now let's see what we can do here, man. We're trying to beat 19 pounds, 19 pounds. Can we do it? Can we do it? Oh, 17 pounds, seven, 17, seven, 17.770. So we're winning, man. We, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good, man. That's, that's a whole pound and a half per tire. So that's three pounds in the rear end. That's, that's pretty good, man. We got a, this is an 11 inch tire as opposed to the other one, which is a 10 inch. So it's actually a bigger tire too. I'm happy with that, man. We're, we're losing weight. We're losing weight. The realities of a lightweight machine are coming to life. Now, since I've been weighing everything, let's go ahead and see what this rim weighs before I weigh this. This is a Douglas G3 rim. It's a, I believe it's a mixture of 0.160 and 0.190. It's supposed to be very durable. The GPS rim was just over seven pounds. 4.158, wow. That is a legitimately three pounds lighter per wheel than the GPS rims. That's huge, that, that's really big. So I think we're making the right move here, switching to that. And unfortunately, I don't have the, I ordered another set of Rockout rims to put for these front ones, because I'm gonna run those other Rockouts and the Havocs on another machine. But I wanna see what this tire weighs. Tire itself weighs 11.10 ounces, that's pretty light. I think the, the Havoc was 12.5. So we're gonna be losing weight in the front too. Now, while we're still on rotational mass, I got some really trick parts that I wanna show you guys. These are attached to the wheels, so I feel like this is all relevant. I got some more aluminum hubs. These are Boss Racing hubs, and these are nice and light. Check this out. These are the takeoff hubs, right, with those busted ass studs. One pound, 12 point, it's easier if we do point in the point pounds, I think. It just makes things easier for everybody, right? 1.794 pounds. That's what those things weigh. Now check this out. Boom, 0.7 pounds. So between the two of them, we're losing over a pound in the hubs. 
And then we got these heavy ass lug nuts. These things are, they're pretty big. I think these are M12s as opposed to the regular M10s. I'm not really sure why that was. I got some titanium bolts up here. I was thinking about using these for the lug nuts. These are sweet. These are real titanium. Titanium is 45% lighter than steel and it's just as strong. I was gonna use those, but I found something even lighter. GPS makes uh, billet aluminum lug nuts. So these are supposed to be strong enough to be used as lug nuts. You can see the choice of champions, pro rider Walker Fowler. If he's using them, shit, I'm using them too. So aluminum, I believe is, um, it's like 65% lighter than steel. So these mixed with the lightweight hubs and the lighter rims, I'm gonna attach them all and then put the old setup on the old rim down there. And we're gonna see just how much weight we're losing in our rotating mass in the back, not including the axle and stuff like that. I know the weight loss stuff is, it's getting out of control guys. But I honestly love doing stuff like this. All right, so we got the heavy ass wheel with the hub and everything. 21 pounds, almost even, 21 pounds. Dude, these lug nuts are freaking sweet. Dude, is that trick or what? These things are badass. So now we got the trick ass super light wheels. We had what? 21 pounds was the other one. Stay. 18 pounds, 9.4 ounces. So we're losing 2.1 pounds per side. That's 4.2 pounds in the rotational mass, just in the rear tires and wheels. That's pretty significant. Now I'd like to do the same thing for the front wheels, put the, the hubs on there and everything and just see what the total uh, like assembly weight is versus the original ones. Uh, but unfortunately, like I said, I don't have those other rock out rims, so I can't do that right now. Uh, but I did do weight reduction on these Lone Star hubs. If you guys remember in the last video, I weighed these things and they were two pounds, I think 5.7 ounces. And the OEM ones are just over two pounds. So we were gaining weight and I just couldn't bear to do that. So I did some calculated measurements to what we can reduce on these things. And I believe we're gonna be perfectly fine the way that they are. The way that they used to be, these snouts kind of came out really wide. So I machined down those. Well, I didn't do it, a buddy of mine did. And we were able to save about five ounces per hub. So they're just over two pounds. Believe it or not, they're still just slightly heavier than stock. Stock is 2.024. And these are 2.072, but it's so minute that I'm, I feel okay running these things. And um, I believe these are still going to be st stronger than stock. I measured the snout of this thing and the stock one in here, and it's about five millimeters thicker than these. Now, granted, this does have a different design. You know, you have these braces here and everything, but these are made of billet 7075 aluminum, whereas these are cast aluminum. And billet 7075 is much stronger than cast aluminum. I don't think we're gonna have any issues here. You have to remember these Lone Star hubs, they're made for guys that are riding like top tier. I mean, literally the pros run these things. They're, hit, they're clearing jumps that are like 130 foot. The cross country guys are smashing stuff going super fast. 99.5% of riders aren't riding that hard and they're not even capable. I'm certainly not capable and I just don't think that I needed the potential that these hubs have out of the box. I think these, like I said, are going to be stronger than stock and we managed to take some weight down and they're going to look really trick. So probably in the next video when those rims come in, we'll assemble the front wheels and everything and see what they weigh. Now there's a ton of parts that have been coming in. Honestly, so much stuff has been coming in. I can't even put it all in the video because I could do like a whole hour long video just going over all the parts, probably even more. I've got a lot of stuff, which I mean, I think people would watch them and just be like, you know, what are we doing here? But I do want to go over some stuff uh, since we're talking about weight savings. Uh, a lot of this stuff, like I said, I've been researching and seeing what we can run that's lightweight and still be durable. Uh, one of the big things was the shifter. So I've got a mod quad shifter here and it is a minus one. And that's because if you remember when we were doing our pegs, the pegs sit back an inch further than stock. So this is a minus one that comes right from Mod Quad. Um, I've drilled a couple extra holes in here. So all these holes up here come from Mod Quad. And then I drilled three extra holes back here. You know, uh, out further away, these are gonna be under a lot of stress. And if they can put holes out there, I figured we could definitely put some holes back here. I don't think we'll have any issues with that ever. And honestly, if it was to break, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You just, you know, your shifter snaps off and you can't shift. Uh, here's the stock one, we'll weigh this first. Stock one weighs 0.594 pounds. Aftermarket, 0.254. It's like less than half of the weight. All this stuff, like I said before, adds up. 
Uh, another pretty trick part is this is a billet aluminum swing arm bolt. This comes from Boss Racing. It's made specifically for the Yamaha Banshee. I believe it's made of 7075, which is a strong billet aluminum. Weigh it against the factory one. Factory is 0.692, aftermarket 0.352. So again, like half of the weight right there. And this one is pretty big. So the billet crossover that I had on the engine I don't like how far out this sticks first off. It makes all the carbs and everything go way far back. Uh, and it has a crossover. There's really no need for a crossover once you get into larger carbs. These are UPP intake boots. There is no crossover built into these things. Check this out. This big ass piece of billet, 1.396 pounds. The boots, 0.338. It's over a pound. So we're losing a pound by ditching this thing. Now I know the, uh, the age old debate over the crossover. Don't quote me on this stuff. I'm, I'm not like an expert on this, but from what I understand, the purpose of the crossover is that the Banshee came with small carbs to begin with. They were too small for the engine. So each cylinder fires one at a time and it's pulling from the carbs one at a time. So that crossover joins the carburetors and it kind of allows for each cylinder to pull from both carburetors. So it was able, when the one cylinder was going down and sucking in air, it was pulling from both of the carburetors. So that kind of enabled them to run smaller carburetors. But once you go up to a larger carburetor, it's unnecessary. So we don't need the, that crossover anymore. Now the boost bottle is a whole nother thing. The concept makes sense. You know, you have a boost bottle that has gas that can, and, and fuel air mixture that can sit in there and add, it's kind of waiting for the next cylinder to pull down. And you would think it could pull in more of a charge from the other side of the carburetor. But apparently it really just, at least in, um, the, the, with the Banshee, that platform, it just, the whole thing was like a scam. It, it just didn't do its job. That's, that's the best way that I can describe it. You guys can argue in the comment section below. Now there's one last thing that I want to weigh before we move on to opening the packages, and that is the cylinders. Now keep in mind, so these are the driveline cylinders. We'll weigh these first. Six pounds, 3.40. So now one thing that I, I want you to keep in mind is we don't have studs in this one. So that's going to add a little bit of weight, but we're also going to be taking just a tad bit of weight out when we do that the rest of the cleanup port. We haven't, I haven't finished that yet. And I mean, the studs, I'm not really sure what they weigh, but let's just get an idea here. So we got 6.340. I think these might be heavier. 6.444. So with the studs, it's probably going to be like, I don't know, 6.6 .6 or something like that. So it's 0.2 pounds heavier. I kind of had a feeling because we've got a smaller bore. There's more aluminum material on there. Um, but that's pretty trivial. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with that. All right, I'm ready, man. Let's open up some new stuff. I already know what's in here because it says minus one bear. Minus one bear. What could it possibly be? This is actually another item that I'm pretty curious to see what the weight difference will be. I don't know if we'll be saving weight or if we'll be gaining weight. I would imagine that we'll be saving weight. Not really sure. Oh, it's got bearings in it. All right, so we've got a minus one motocross swing arm. This is built by the swing arm shop. I found this on eBay. It's actually fairly inexpensive for an aftermarket swing arm. It was just over 400 bucks shipped. That's that's really not bad. It looks like it's super durable. Looks like it's MIG welded, which is fine by me. They look like really good welds. And to go along with this, I've got a billet carrier. This is a roundhouse style carrier. So we're gonna be switching over to a Honda style. I don't like the traditional you know, Yamaha style with the two bolts that you have to adjust and everything. I just think this is a better system. I know a lot of guys switch over to this. So there's gotta be a reason that they that they made the switch over kits. This is literally like a, a kit for the Yamaha Banshee. It comes with the brake stay and everything so that you can convert to this style. And then of course, I've got my chain slide stuff over here. I've already put the bearing um, spacer in here. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV for hooking up all the bearings on this build. And yes, we are going to put this thing on the scale of doom and weigh it against this beautiful stock unit. All right, now I'm gonna to try to outfit these things exactly the same between bearings, chain slider. I got the carrier just placed in there and I'm just gonna sit the chain slider for this one on the scale with it. Now this is a minus one. I got that for handling purposes. I want this thing to be really nimble and I wanted to overall just make the platform tighter. So there is hope here. This might be lighter than stock. The stock unit is super beefy, dude. It's like ultra gusseted and everything. It is definitely a heavy, a heavy unit. So let's put this on here. 
19 point nine. It's teetering on the 19.4. So we'll just say 19.4 pounds for the stock thing is a beast. Now I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at the scale. I'm not going to look at the scale. I'm going to put everything on there first. Get the swing arm on there. Put our chain slide, chain roller, our clip. We'll put it in the bag to make up for the dirt on the other one. Got these two little spacers. 18.9. All right. So we're, what, what the heck was it? 19.4. So it's like a half a pound lighter. All right. Well, that's we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. <laughs> And this is sprung weight, especially on the back here. This is heavy, so moving in the right direction, man, that's a win. My package is so huge, I can't open it up on the bench. So we're going to have to open it up over here. This is an easy one to guess, too. I mean, there's not too many things on a quad that would come in a box this big. Wow. Ooh, these are actually pretty nice. All right, these are so big that I can't really stand behind the bench, so I think we're going to freehand it here, and we're just going to check these things out together. <sighs> I'm going to be straight with you guys. These are really nice. I'm going to say these are OEM quality. They're super glossy. Believe it or not, these are Amazon plastics or eBay plastics. I'm going to have these linked in the description below. All the stuff in this video, anything that there are links for, it will be linked in the description below. These are these are quite nice. So I've had my hands on OEM plastics. I've had them on Meyer. You know, the, um, the older plastics are Meyer. There's, there's nothing wrong with those, but I'm being... <laughs> I think these are nicer. These All the edges are very square. They resemble OEM pretty much to a T. Uh, up here, this is something that I really noticed, how square these are. On the Meyer, everything's kind of like rounded. I'm not saying anything bad about the Meyer. They're still great aftermarket plastics, but these are... I'm going to guess that the fit and finish on these is going to be it's going to be a little bit better. I think what I might do is make a video uh, comparing these to the Meyer. I'll do that in a separate video because I did a Meyer video in the past. So this will be these are aftermarket, man. These are I think the brand is Hakasa. But I got these on Amazon. I believe it was 580 for everything. It had the the tank, the side panels, the little rubber strips. It even came with a radiator guard. The only thing I noticed was that the radiator guard was put on backwards, which, I mean, I'll uh, I'll pay 580 bucks and save the money for this and just switch that thing around myself. That's not really a problem. And uh, I actually want to weigh that against the radiator cover that we're taking off because I'm pretty sure that's a good bit lighter. A little bit of weight savings there. I'm not going to weigh all the plastics against it. That would be ridiculous. You guys may notice this piece right here. This is a tank cover. This was sent to me by Banshee Taco. And this is real carbon fiber. You can check him out on Instagram at Banshee Taco. Guy makes all kinds of carbon fiber stuff for Banshees and it's top tier quality. Really nice trick piece. That's gonna add some bling and it weighs basically nothing. So we won't be adding any weight with that, but that's a really nice piece. It's gonna go with the black. It's gonna be sweet. The only thing is why do they have to put these stupid recessions in the plastics. It's, I would say this is a step up from OEM because the OEM ones, they have like these big bulky things and they have holes in them with rivets that, that makes it even worse. But they still have the little depression. Like, why can't they just get rid of that? When we have the graphics on there, we'll probably be, uh, we'll barely even notice that, but that's the only complaint that I have visually. I'm gonna guess that these are nice and durable. Like, see how nice and square this is? That's really nice. Really, really nice. And it's got the little tool chest thing. That's another thing on the Meyer. You don't, they get rid of that. So you, you, you still got the little pocket there so you can put something under the seat. You'd be surprised when you're out riding how useful something like that is. You can put spark plugs in there, zip ties, your wallet. Just It's nice to have. And it's got the little thing that folds over and clips shut too. All right, check this out, man. So here is the takeoff. And the primary thing that makes this thing heavy is this radiator guard. It is a trick guard. You know, it looks really cool. But, you know, we're going for weight savings here, so it's just not practical. One point two three six pounds. Now let's weigh the new one. Point five seven. So it's less than half the weight. Yeah, legitimately less than half the weight. And then the last thing I want to show you for this video, because I feel like this goes along with the plastics is in this bag and it's this sweet ass seat cover. 
Oh yeah, dude, this thing is freaking nice. It's a four work seat cover and it's gonna go with this color scheme. Oh man, is it gonna look good. Got the carbon fiber tank cover and then I've got, I ordered this carbon fiber side and back stitching. It's gonna go together sweet, dude. I'm telling you, this thing is gonna flow. It's gonna look great, man. I got the graphics coming on the way from AGMX. Oh man, I can't wait to get this thing together. It's just gonna be freaking sweet. Well, if it isn't obvious, guys, I've gone a little bit crazy with the weight saving stuff, but I'm enjoying doing this. I really think that it's going to make a big difference in the end. And we're actually starting to get realistically lighter. I'm, you know, I mean, with the tires and stuff, you know, I think that was a necessary change to switch over to these Kendas and the G3 rims. It just wasn't looking good with those other ones, man. We were adding weight there and whew. But in the end, like I said, I think we're gonna do pretty good. I think the engine's gonna be slightly lighter. There's a bunch of other stuff. I got some internal stuff that's gonna be a little bit lighter. In the front end, we have those Fox float shocks. We're gonna lose some weight there. I've actually got Dave Moore building me a set of J-arms for this thing. So I switched over. Uh, the lead time on those other ones was just way too long. And Dave stepped in and he's like, bro, I'm gonna hook you up with some J-arms. He used to make them back in like, I guess the 80s and 90s. So I think he has a jig and everything. Really excited about that. But let me know in the comments below what you think of the changes, if you think they're necessary. If not, I really, really enjoy experimenting with this stuff and it's gonna be even more fun to actually run it. And then down the road, when I have some seat time and experience with this stuff, I can say, yes, it does make sense to make the machine lighter or no, it doesn't. Different things are good, different things are bad. That's what I like to do, man. You guys can uh, watch me struggle with this stuff, maybe fail, you know, if it's possible that this thing is going to explode and things are going to fall apart, but you guys can learn from me. You know what I mean? If you guys ordered a 2021 blackout t-shirt, as of now, they are all in the mail. That ended up taking a lot more time than I anticipated. It, me packing those up and labeling them and shipping them out and everything, it takes like five minutes per shirt. So you got to figure five minutes times 300. It just took up a lot of time this week, which is fine, man. I'm super excited that as many people ordered as they did, but I just want to let you guys know that they are all in the mail as of now. So uh, that's going to be it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this content and you want to see more of it, please give me a thumbs up. That helps me out big time. Also, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the video and what you think about all these changes and stuff. If you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing for more videos like this. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.